now from the makers of Coldwater Omo. Well, Mr. Watney, you've seen over the whole of the building. I think you'll agree that the security precautions are more than successful. In fact, the whole of this centre is so well guarded that it's uh, foolproof. I must say, I can see no fault at all, Major Sparshot. Who designed the security system? <clears throat> uh, you're John Teed, actually. I see. Well, no wonder Mrs. Steele was so sure of herself. I told you, sir. But we know information is leaking out of here. And it's my job to find out how. If only I had something to go on. Mm, who knows? Perhaps Mrs. Peel may come up with something. Mrs. Peel, at that moment, was driving her car along the cliff road towards Apple Tree Cottage in Farnham Lane. She wouldn't have been surprised if she'd known Sparshot and Watney were talking about her. But she would have been very surprised if she could have heard another conversation on a telephone. Yes, sir. Mark in here. The girl, Mrs. Emma Peel. She's left the Cumadoc research place and is heading for Guthrie's cottage. Think we should take action? Look in on what she's doing? Right. I'll leave everything to you. Should be very interesting. The Avengers. <laughs> John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. John Seed has his doubts about Mrs. Peel's assignment, and Mrs. Peel herself finds evidence to suggest that the security leak is all done by mirrors. John Seed had been placed under close arrest. It was Mother's idea, and Steed knew there was far more to it than he'd been told. The close arrest meant, in fact, that Steed was on holiday, pending the clearing up of the security problems at the Carmatic Research Establishment. Steed knew better than to question Mother too closely. He waited his time, sitting in the sunshine under a large, colorful umbrella, playing chess. Oh, used to be able to play this blindfold. Better take the bandages off, Mother, or you'll be checkmate in two moves. I yeah, think I can't read your mind, Steed. Huh. There. Oh, very good. It's stalemate, Mother. Want another? Not just at the moment. Uh, speaking of stalemate, uh, how long is this going on? You mean the chess, the fine weather, or just life in general? I mean this enforced retirement from the game of catching mastermind until the problems at Card Maddock are cleared up. Think it can be done without me? It's got to be. One hesitates to be disloyal to a colleague, but... Really, using Watney is a little like um, advancing a pawn, isn't it? Pawns can be very useful. And after all, we have the queen in the game. Well, that's what worries me. Mrs. Peel is more than capable on her own. Uh, Mother, I know we all have to start somewhere, but really, uh, Watney... Wait for the report, Steed. I'll see that you're informed. If she gets into serious trouble, Mother, I warn you... You'll find I'll break out of this pleasant prison. If she gets into serious trouble, you won't have to. And I'll set up the pieces again. I'm in a winning mood. All right. Possible. Inside, outside, or something in between. What sort of opening gambit is that? I'm thinking of the Carmatic Research Center. I worked out that security system myself. I'll swear it's foolproof. It must be inside. And I personally screened everyone from Major Sparshot down. It's got to be outside. Or something in between? A method of getting inside from the outside without anyone knowing? It's, it's a tough one. Yeah, so is beating me at chess. Your move, Steed. <laughs> the object of everyone's thoughts, managed to find Apple Tree Cottage without any trouble at all. She parked her car under some trees and walked swiftly up the path. The front door was ajar. 
Mrs. Peel knocked. There was no answer. So she entered. To her amazement, she found herself not in an old-fashioned room filled with chintz and easy chairs with antimacassars, but what looked like the study of an amateur astronomer. There were books on the subject in every room, astral charts, and, pointing from the far window, quite a large telescope. It was all very learned, all very pleasant. The only strange thing was that all the mirrors in the room had been broken. Splinters of glass scattered the floor. The door slammed behind her. Mrs. Peel wheeled round to find herself confronted by a sweet old lady. He isn't home yet. I made the tea. Twice. And he still isn't home yet. It's really very puzzling. Not himself at all. Oh, I'm Miss Daisy. Who isn't home, Miss Daisy? Mr. Guthrie. But Mr. Guthrie is not home yet. Yes, that's what I was saying. And he's always so very punctual. Very punctual. I should know. After all, I've looked after him for ten years now. Oh, then you knew him. Uh, know him very well, like my own son. Such a nice gentleman. Oh, I do wish he'd come home for tea. He must be a very interesting man. An astronomer? Yes. That's the stars, you know. Up there. The stars. But would you like to have some tea? Well, I then, by the time it's brew, he should be home. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind of you. I'd like a cup. Emma Peel hadn't the faintest idea that her conversation was being listened to by the man named Markin. I'm sorry, sir. I can only pick them up very faintly. You are sure you're spot on, sir. You'd better try another angle. Still not very good. Hold it, that's better. Can you tell me a little more about him? Who? Oh, oh, Mr. Guthrie. Yes, yes, of course. Okay, I've got them now loud and clear. Hear every word. In the cottage, Miss Daisy poured tea and wandered on. Yes, yes, he won't be long. This is his room, you know. Mm, I thought it might be. Uh, they say it's seven years bad luck. Eh? What's that? Breaking the mirror. Oh, that wasn't me. That was Mr. Guthrie. I helped him, of course. Take a hammer, Daisy, he said. Take a hammer and smash everything shiny. <laughs> oh, it was wicked of me. But you know, I quite enjoyed it. He did it deliberately. But didn't he say why? Why what, my dear? Why he wanted to smash things. Oh, not things. Only the shiny things. I think it had something to do with Mr. Williams. Who's Mr. Williams? Oh, he's such a nice man, Mr. Williams. And he and Mr. Guthrie get along so well together. Where does he live? Oh, in the sweetest little house. I mean, exactly where does he live? Down the road. One takes the first turning on the left by the sycamores, down as far as the Laburnum, and straight on until you come to the road of Dendrums. And the very next house is the one owned by Mr. Williams. Oh, excuse me, my dear. Do you mind if I draw the curtains? The sunlight is really quite dazzling. Miss Daisy crossed to the window and drew the curtains. Markin's receiving set went dead. He got on the telephone immediately. I'm sorry, sir. It went as dead as a doornail. Yes, just as the old lady was talking about Frederick Williams. Yes, it's time to move. Oh, well, we have a head start. Yes, I agree. Yes, sir. Gotho is here with me. He will take care of everything. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Gotho. A moronic, monumental Mongolian moved forward. Ah, sure. You heard that. Frederick Williams, you know what to do? <laughs> sir, take the head, then. Gotho stopped and picked up a large piece of firewood. Enough said. Some little time after that, Frederick Williams was trying to work out a fairly difficult equation on the back of an envelope. He was so engrossed in his work that he failed to hear the door of his workshop creak open. Gozzo, surprisingly light on his feet for a man of his size, slid into the room. His large hands were outstretched. Williams, sensing that something was wrong, swung round and leapt to his feet. 
too late. No. No. <laughs> and at the Carmatic Research Center... Uh, so you see, what near the solar rays are picked up, refracted into the ultraviolet and infrared, the sedentary regurgitator here, fed through the advent trimax condensers, exaggerated in the accelerator correct system, and fed out in pure plus X deradiated energy put into activated assistance here. Mm. That's in layman's terms, of course. Quite. Uh, most scientific. Thank you. More simply, the sun makes the wheels go round. I see. Yeah, uh, Major Sparkle. Yes, Mr. Watney. The fellow with the binoculars over there at the window. Dr. Seligman. Brilliant. He appears to be behaving in a very suspicious manner. Allow me to introduce you. You can tell him so yourself. No, 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 really. I, I, I didn't uh, think Dr. I knew... Seligman, Mr. Watney thinks you're behaving suspiciously. I understood that Mr. Watney was from the ministry on an educational tour. Well, go ahead, Mr. Watney. Mm. Tell him. <laughs> I'm here to investigate the leakage of secrets. To investigate the leakages? Or investigate us, Mr. Watney? Both, if necessary. <laughs> now, gentlemen, I uh, must insist that you all pay attention to me. The scientists in the room all looked at young Watney for a hard moment. And all went back to work. Mother's going to get that report any minute. And it'll be a rocket for young Watney. Can't blame Mrs. Peel for this one. Mrs. Peel had reached the cottage that lay beyond the laburnums and the sycamores and the rhododendrons, and again had found the door open. She walked in. Frederick Williams was lying beside his upturned workbench, clearly strangled. Mrs. Peel knelt beside him. Mm. Nasty. Strangled. And what's this in his hand? Mrs. Peel extracted the crumpled envelope that Williams had been scribbling on when he was so viciously attacked. She was standing, trying to make sense of the figures scribbled upon it, laughed in thought, when the door swung open a little wider as Gosso entered silently, a smile slobbering on his fleshy lips, his enormous hands outstretched. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Speed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen. <laughs>